Nobody wants to make 200, 150 calls in a day, but that 150 calls, you can land that one contract with 16 houses on it. And I know because I've done it. Crafted Entrepreneurs. Today, I get to bring you a fellow listener, and I'm super excited to have this conversation with Melissa Wolf. She's been a longtime podcast listener, and Chase actually met her at the last mastermind we were at, and I was already in bed asleep. Chase is like the networker out of us, and (laughs) I'm like, I'm going to bed. And I love that he met Melissa, and we've been able to form a friendship, now a business partnership too. She's been able to help me create an amazing software that we're bringing to the world. And so I'm really excited to introduce you, Melissa. She's a mom of two. She's a VP of a huge software company. And she's somebody out there that just like gets it done. We're going to talk about her wholesale experience as well. So Melissa, welcome to the show. Well, thank you so much. I'm very excited to be here. I can't honestly believe and tell you that Within the year or so that I've been listening to your podcast, I never honestly thought that I would be on here. So it's very exciting. (laughs) Yay! (laughs) Well, I'm so excited that you're on here. And tell everybody like a little bit about your real estate experience, because that's really what we bonded over. So tell people about your story of how you got started in the real estate space. So it's a little bit funny. Um, I was actually, I owned a cleaning company for about 12 years And I had this client that I had been working for for a really long time, and he was a broker. And I kept listening to him put deals through, put deals through. And one day he broke his leg. So I was the one who was going and taking his checks and depositing in the bank. Oh, wow. There's a lot of trust. (laughs) Yeah. And I, and like I kept seeing those numbers, and I, I was like, I can, I can do this, you know, like, I kept listening to him make deals and there, I was like, there's no way that I couldn't do that. So I went to real estate school. I got my license and um, very quickly realized that retail wasn't really my thing. And I met somebody in acquisitions and I actually took a little bit of training from him, did the Rafael Vargas training through, through the company that I was acquisitioning in. And then I started right away. Within three weeks, I got my first deal. Woo! Yes. And it was so funny because I found the deal off of Zillow and I had this card and I was like, okay, great. I have this contract, but where do I find a buyer? So Mm -hmm. I had this postcard and I called the number on the back of it. And the guy that answered owned a, we buy houses for cash. Mm -hmm. And he basically said, he goes, how long have you been doing this? And I said, well, this is my first deal. And he goes, no way. You sound like you've been doing this for years. <laughs> so that kind of basically took me into, I, I ended up closing on that deal. And then I got another deal of 16 contracts in one. I was getting leads off of Freedom Soft, and an older woman answered the phone. It was after like 150 calls that day. And she answers and she says, I have actually 16 properties that my mother left me and I don't know what to do with them. So I took it to my partner and my partner was like, oh yeah, we can close on this. And here's the funny thing about the wholesale industry. And some parts of the wholesale industry are amazing. And then there are the dark parts. And that was the one thing that happened to me is my partner ended up going around me, found an end buyer and waited for my contract to expire because I didn't have my own buyers. I was using his. Mm -hmm. And that kind of led me where I am now. I met Mark and, and I saw his vision and now I'm, now I'm here. So. Yeah. Okay. So there's a lot happening there. So for people listening in right now, she got screwed over. Okay. Yes. <laughs> That's what it is in like big, bold letters right now. Okay. She got screwed over. Yes. And what was going through your mind? Because I can only imagine I've been screwed over before in business too. And the feeling of betrayal, especially when you, when you're in partnership with somebody, it, it hurts, it cuts deep. So how did you like, tell me what it felt like. And what did you do to get through that and keep pushing through and be where you are today? Honestly, it was 
it was probably the worst feeling I had ever felt in my entire life. I yeah. felt scared, number one, because I was really relying on, you know, what I was going to get off of the sale. What would you have made? So essentially I would have made around $1.6 million. Wow. Okay. You guys, she lost $1.6 million because of betrayal. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It was, it was, it was really terrible. With two little kids. Yeah. Uh, my son at the time was only nine. My daughter had just been born. She was maybe five months old. And I, I'm here like fresh into real estate, had only been wholesaling for a couple of months, just got my license. And I'm sitting here thinking to myself, like, I've been living off my savings this whole time. I'm not, I, I got rid of my cleaning business. Now here I am living off my savings, living the real estate dream. Mm -hmm. And I lose out on all of this commission. And I'm like, wow, wow how do I, how do I live? Right. So I actually left the partnership. Well, yeah. <laughs> I didn't end up saying anything to him. I kind of, I dealt with it very gracefully because in, in my mind it was, okay, if I trash him, then the next person's going to trash me. Mm. And for me, it was more about, I stayed away from him and I made sure that the people that I was close to, I gave them like a, Hey, this is what happened. So just be careful. I love that about you. It's like, you know what? You didn't want to put any energy into bashing him. You just said, okay, let me just get focused on my future. You were already thinking about your next deal. Right. And I think that's an important mindset for anybody who's going to be successful in any industry that you're in. You're just as good as your last deal, right? So, okay, that one didn't go as well. So you got to focus on the next deal because it's always about right. the next deal. You said something interesting too, where you handled it gracefully. So my mind, and it's probably the drama part of my mind because I'm like, what does that look like? Does like, does he know that you know that he screwed you over? Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. And so you just like walked away like, okay, wish you well. Bye. Pretty much. Like, what does gracefully look like? Like, I would just say gracefully would mean you didn't slash his tires. But right. So, <laughs> so no, I, I, I didn't slash his tires. <laughs> um, I didn't break out his windows, although I really wanted to. I actually came into the office. I collected my belongings. I wrote him a letter of resignation. I handed it over to him. And I basically said, you know, good luck. I, I hope you and wish you well, you know, and I just wow. left. So what did you do to find your next deal then? So you're like, okay, moving on. So I took all of that and I started pushing it myself. I started calling, calling leads. I started looking for buyers in my area. I started calling people on Zillow. I had a few friends that are, were also in the real estate space and started working with them and seeing how we could collaborate and push deals that way. I went to and did a lot of networking and getting my name out there and connecting with other people. I just focused on the end goal. Yeah. What was your end goal at the time? The end goal was to keep my head afloat and make sure I didn't lose everything, to be honest with you, because I, I mean, I put everything into that, into that one dream, you know? What is your end goal now, now that you're out of it and you're thriving? So I actually... I want to start investing. That's one thing that I haven't started doing yet. And I would really like to actually buy a duplex. <laughs> I know that that's one of the things that you talk about and you push the most is, you know, creating generational wealth and that, and duplexes are a great way to do that. But I'd like to actually purchase a duplex and then kind of rehab both sides and then flip it. And then I, I'm not really for sure if I want to buy and hold or if I want to just fix and flip yet. Okay. All right. We should talk about the options. I think yes. people could learn from that. So we'll talk about the options, but I want to get in first to, first of all, okay. So I'm hearing you're not investing yet, but you're in this world. All you do is talk to investors all the time, right? Cause you're helping them build software. Like you help me build software. So I want everybody listening in right now to know that it's not too late to get into the investing game. 
start now, yeah. start with what you have. She's coming in with a lot of experience. So you're going to get to where you want to go a lot quicker. And also it's just important to partner with the right people, right? It's, it's so yes. important to partner with the right people. So let's talk about networking because that's how I know you because my husband networked with you. And then you texted me, you followed up and like, mm-hmm. Hey, I met Chase at the bar and we, he said, we need to connect. I listened to your podcast and I'd love to chat. And I was like, who is this girl? All right, fine. And you, I think you texted me like two or three times and I finally texted back. And so point one right there with Melissa, she's relentless. And if you want to be a successful investor, you've got to be relentless. You really do. You have to like know what you want, keep going after it. And I want to know your process of networking because that's how you've been able to build out this software company and help a lot of people. So for me going to events, I absolutely hate it. I make myself go like we were at the same event and I'm in bed, (laughs) you know, and, um, I just, I, I really don't like networking, but I know that there's so much fruit that can come from it. And I know that there's people listening in right now that are a lot like me, obviously they're listening to me, but they've got to do those things to get out of their comfort zone. So what can they do to network and see the fruits of it? So they continue to push through and get in rooms where they don't know anybody. So my, my main thing is have a goal. When you go in to a networking room, sit down and think, okay, I have to talk to at least these five people. Look at the general audience of what and who's going to be in the room and pick targeted people that are going to add value to what you're doing in your business. And for me, that looks like, okay, I want Tom, Jane, and Sally. All three of them are coaches. That's my avatar. I focus mainly on bringing coaches in or influencers in the real estate space. So I narrow down, okay, I've talked to Tom, I've talked to Sally, and but I, I haven't met up with the third person on my list yet. So I essentially will walk in and I'll say, okay, if I can't get to the third person, then I'm going to pick up at least two or three more people that are just as equally valuable to what I'm doing as that one person would be, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. It's brilliant. And I just want to go back to the intentionality behind here. So you study the game, right? Like, so you're like, here are my top people that I need to connect with. And I think I don't do that. And so I'm going to learn that from you and start doing that be like looking ahead of time. Who's going to be at this event? Who do I need to meet? Make a list. And it's like, you're setting that intention, putting it out there. And I feel like it, like good things come from that all the time. And so I love that step one. Now, now you got to have conversations though with people, right? So you met Tom and Sally, but like, what did you say to Tom and Sally? Because I think that's where people get really hung up because we weren't taught this in school. Like, you know, we were taught to be quiet in school. So we get scared when we have to use our voices. And I do. I, I actually really get scared. Um, Mm. so much so that my, my chest will get red and I will get so nervous. And most of the time I'll just walk up to somebody and I'll make a completely unintentional joke. (laughs) And I, and I know that sounds hilarious, but it's true. I do. I'll walk up to somebody and I'll be like, man, they, they said a lot today. And, or, or like, I'll just say something that makes no sense. Or if it's a woman, I'll compliment them on what they're wearing. Wow. You look amazing. I can't believe how great that color looks on you. And it automatically just opens up the conversation and makes it feel more warm and trusting in the, I guess, in the environment. Cause we're all super uncomfortable sometimes, unless you're, unless you're a natural event goer and you've been going for, you know, a very long time. And it's something that you do on a regular basis. It's, it's hard to really ground yourself. And I'll also do things like when I wake up in the morning, I'll do, you know, my affirmations in the mirror and I'll talk to myself as I'm getting ready and I'll hype myself up. You know, I, you can do this. You're amazing. Everybody is going to love what you're doing with your business, you know, things like that nature. Well, so I love that you said humor, like humor, humor connects people. Like if we can laugh, we're going to bond, right? It's so true. And like, I think at the end of the day, you want to be the person that makes people laugh. 
I read a whole book called, um, it's all about humor. And (laughs) I realized like there's, there's things that are happening in our brain when we laugh together. And so that's why it's so important to do the inner work. So that way you can find the joy in life and you can find the humor in things so you can connect with people. So I love that about you. Okay. So finding humor is step one. Yes. Step two, you're, you know, speaking life into yourself. That is so important. Speaking life into yourself. Now, what does your pitch look like when you're like, okay, I'm going to seal the deal with Tom. I want to get another call on the books. So that way we're going to do business together somehow. So usually I actually really don't talk a lot of business at networking events, to be honest with you, because I feel like building that friendship is, is more important. The one thing that I learned when I started wholesaling was building the rapport. If Mm -hmm. that person feels close enough to you that they can trust you and are comfortable around you, that sets you up for success with doing business together. So when I pitch something or when I pitch my business, I will look at Tom and I'll say, Hey, you know, I really loved having a conversation with you. We definitely need to do business. I definitely feel like there's some synergy here. Here's my number. And then I'll give him my number or we'll take a selfie and I'll text it to him. And then I'll follow up afterwards. Oh, genius move. And you know what, while you were talking, I was looking at my phone because I wanted to see what was the text message that Melissa sent me that I finally responded to. You sent me a message that said, you talked about my most recent podcast episode and what you loved about it. And that was the genius move that made me respond because it set you apart. I was like, oh, wow, she actually does. Because people will say they listen to the podcast, but I'm like, oh, if she knows this, she actually does listen in. And I'm going to give her the time of day now. So you went that extra mile, which I think is so important to build that rapport with me because then I trusted you, right? I trusted what you had to say. And so I was willing to have a phone conversation with you. So I absolutely love that. Now let's talk about what we're doing together because I am so freaking pumped. You're a genius. (laughs) You've helped me create this, what we're calling the global off market place. What does that mean? This is the first time I'm talking about it publicly too. I've waited to do this podcast episode with you. So that way we could put it out to the world and get people excited. It's a completely free software we're allowing people to use. It's called Crafted Deals. So can you talk about it? So essentially it is a acquisitions and dispositions listing platform where we are giving the ability to wholesalers to come on, list their deals, be able to get their deals in front of uh, large equity funds, hedge funds per se, such as, you know, the bigger one and Invitation Homes, MYND, SRF3 that are buying in specific areas where essentially you'll be able to click a button and it will automatically scrub your deal the data that you've put in your listing, and then it will match you with these specific funds. And you will be able to click a button that says direct to fund and it'll immediately go straight to their buy box. Aside from that, you have the ability to make it live on the global marketplace, which is where you are able to make it live within thousands of other users. So let's say all of your listeners are able to intershare their deals. Hmm. Okay. So I'm actually going to pull up this site right now because I want people to understand how cool it is. Okay. Uh, so mm-hmm. if you are listening into the podcast right now, I'm actually going to log in here. I'm going to share the screen. So if you're listening into the podcast, you guys can go to YouTube and actually watch this, which is so awesome. So you can see what it looks like. We're going to walk people through it here. So here we are. This is actually what it looks like. So when you see all these pink bubbles over here, these are homes that we already have listed all over the U.S. And you said something interesting earlier. You said, you know, you got your license and then Mm -hmm. you started wholesaling, but you don't necessarily need a real estate license to wholesale. I mean, I've wholesaled deals without a real estate license. So can anybody wholesale? Yes, anybody can wholesale. One of the best parts of wholesaling is that you get the best deals. 
Okay. So that's why, you know, when people ask me, Kayla, why do you only buy off market properties? Um, it's because that is where the deals are. So most of the time. So let's, let's walk them through the, the, the software here. This is completely free. You guys can go sign up, go to crafteddeals.co. We're going to link it up in the show notes as well. I would just sign up. Even if you're like, I'm not even in wholesaling yet. I don't know what I'm doing yet. Go on there. If you want to get into the real estate investing space, get your membership right now before I start charging for it. Cause it's completely free right now. Okay. So let's walk over here. It's a global off marketplace. What would people do? Let's say Sally, she just inherited a property. Okay. Mm -hmm. And she, she doesn't want to deal with it. She, she wants to get rid of it. Can Sally go on here and post the property? Absolutely. She can go down on the left on the menu page. If you go down to add new property, she can click on add new property and she can go through the steps of starting to build her listing. Mm. Okay. So basically she would type in here the address. Correct. 3143 Lockwood Meadows. Lockwood Meadows. Let's yes, go, baby. There it Sarasota, is. Sarasota, Florida? Yes, ma'am. All right. So we're going to click so, on this. Yes. Push continue. And there's the beauty. Perfect. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wow. So we have all this and we say, yes, this is the correct information. So we're going to go, yes, click that. And then make sure all of this is right. We're going to set up water connection, blah, 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 all of this stuff, right? Correct. This is just you spooling up the listing or making the listing. It already has a lot of it already inputted here. We actually um, collect all of the data from the counties. We are collecting over 3,400 counties and it automates and puts it through in the listing. Less work for you. <sighs> That's amazing. <laughs> Well, less work for my listeners, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to do this. And there might be an agent listening into this right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. I want to talk to the agents because this is, can agents use crafted deals? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So that was another thing that I wanted to touch on is we are actually going to hang a national broker's license over the entire software. So agents can also put on market deals as well. That's something that's going to be here in the future, wow. but agents can still use this, the system. That's so incredible. Okay. I'm so <laughs> pumped about this. So agents pay attention, get your membership now. All right. So it goes yes. here. It asks you, are you the owner of this home or all, are you a wholesaler? So that also means like you know of a friend who has grandma's house that she inherited. And you're like, oh, well, I could sell it for you. You could come Correct. on here and just choose wholesaler. Correct. Right? Okay. Yes. Um, what and does I it mean to double close this transaction? What does that so mean, Melissa? So double closing means that I got grandma's house and I want to sell it to Sally, but I don't want Sally to necessarily know or I don't want to enclose all of the information. Let's say, usually when you double close, you, you want to close twice. So the seller is going to close with you, and then you're going to close with the end buyer. Usually how that's put in is because of the assignment fee, and you don't want the buyer to know how much you're making in the assignment fee. There we go. Okay. What are typical assignment fees? Uh, it really just varies from deal to deal. I mean, it can be anywhere between 3,000, 6,000, 10,000. If it's a really big spread and you get a really great deal, let's say you get the house for $120,000 and it's worth 450 market value, you can add in, you know, you can add in an assignment fee for $25,000. It just depends on how big the spread is. So what does it mean to assign my AB contract? And remember, if you want to see what we're looking at right now, I want you to head over to Kayla Craft on YouTube so you can actually see this on your screen. Yes. So assigning is where you are getting the house under contract. You're agreeing that they are going to sell it, but you are actually going to assign it to the end buyer. So you're not ever going to purchase the property. You're agreeing with the seller that you have the intention of 
closing, but you are going to actually close with an end buyer and not yourself. Awesome. So you're telling me right now, okay, so if you are brand new to wholesaling, I, I want to explain this to you. This is how easy we are making it for you. Normally, when you are assigning a contract, you have to go to the title company and get all of this done. What we have done on this software is title is included. That makes your life as a wholesaler so easy. It does. You can actually communicate completely with the title company through the software. Wow. Okay. So we, here's the part where we would enter in current seller and current buyer information. So I'm going to stop sharing the screen. So I can't give you guys all the juice because you guys just need to go to craftedeals.co and sign up. Remember it's completely free. You're not, you're not uh, committing to anything or anything like that. You guys could go and buy houses out there if you want to, you could be the end buyer. If you're an investor and you want to look for a great deal, go over there. I would be ecstatic if you started buying properties over there. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) I absolutely love what we've created over there. And I'm so, so thankful that you, you know, continued to follow up with me and really helped me see the vision because at first I didn't really see like, how, how does this really go into alignment? Because I haven't been teaching wholesaling for a long time. You know, even though I have a lot of wholesalers in my network, all I'm focused on right now is investing and helping my community, like every single listener right now, I want you to become a real estate investor in whatever way that looks like. If that's just getting into it with wholesaling, wholesaling takes zero of your own money. It just takes your time. And with crafted deals specifically, what we've done is really helped you create a buyer's list without knowing people because of the equity funds that are a part of it. And, um, also you guys that as listeners, coming in and maybe you're the end buyer and we're using each other as a community to grow as investors. And so I am so, so thankful that we were able to do this when you were super into wholesaling. Okay. How did you find good off market deals? Like where were you finding your leads? You have to make the calls. I mean, honestly, there are hundreds of lead generators out there, but essentially getting those leads and calling and calling and calling and pulling those lists. If you're not able to show up and make that 150 calls a day, or you're not putting in the work and knocking on doors and you're not putting in the work and putting signs out there and saying, we buy houses or, you know, just putting in the grunt work is really where you get the ability to find those deals. And nobody, let's put it this way, nobody wants to make 200, 150 calls in a day. But that 150 calls, you can land that one contract with 16 houses on it. And I know because I've done it. Yeah, that's so exciting. And so what's awesome is that, you know, I have crafted deals, the marketplace, right? Which is what I've created with you. But we also have crafted deals, the lead generator. And on that site, you only get access to that if you're actually a crafted entrepreneur student. So if you're interested in learning more about that, just head over to kaylacraft.com. You guys can learn more about it. But we have a ton of different ways to generate leads over there. We're using artificial intelligence to help you find motivated sellers. And we also have direct mail completely already integrated into that platform. So you can get mailers out there and into people's mailboxes and, you know, be seen by more people as you're making calls, which is so exciting, right? That is amazing. I know. I'm really excited about it. So what should people do right now? If they want to make more deals happen, what should, let's say, a day in the life look like for them? A day in the life should look like waking up early, making sure that you take a few moments to really connect with yourself, getting yourself in a motivated space, getting on the computer and pushing and pushing and pushing. You know, go to... (laughs) Kayla's lead generator, put out those mailer lists, make those phone calls, return emails, and just don't give up because it's going to be hard and it's going to take a long time. And that first deal, when it finally comes, it's going to feel like you won the lottery. 
I know for a fact, when I got my first deal, I jumped out of my chair and started screaming, yes, I got one. I did it because I, oh, it was so much work, right? It was just so much work. And I, I was so proud. <laughs> I love that. I love your enthusiasm for life. And I think that that's what people need to take away from this call too, is just like be enthusiastic about what you have going on. She's been able to really grow this software company to, I mean, how long has it been around? It's rather new, right? It's been a year. A year. And you guys have had so much success. We have. We actually have built out quite a significant change. We've actually gone through version one all the way to version three. That's a lot of work. If you're, if you're not familiar with the software space to do that in one year is unheard of. So I'm super <laughs> proud of you for doing that. And you've done that by being open to feedback, uh, growing, networking. You're at every single event that's out there. I know to like meet people and to work. So I know you're traveling a lot right now. Where do you see yourself and your company in, let's say five years? I'm hoping that our company will be the biggest wholesaling software development company around. I want our platform to become the single most used wholesaling platform in this industry. And I know that we can do it. Do you think that wholesaling is for everybody? Like, yes, everybody can do it, but do you think everybody should do it? Who is a perfect candidate for somebody who wants to become a wholesaler? I think if you are a person that is willing to push and grind every day and you're willing to put the hustle in, then it's for you. But if you are not a self-starter, then wholesaling will like, basically eat you alive. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Okay. And, and I mean that in the nicest way possible. <laughs> well, I, I talk about that all the time, Melissa. It's not everybody is meant to do everything just because there's an opportunity there. It doesn't mean it's for 100% of the people, you know? Yeah. And I think if you aren't a self-starter, there's something inside of you that requires some healing and some inner work because there's just a self-sabotager that's running the show right, right now. And so yeah. you've got to be willing to do the work because whatever you're passionate about, when you have an end goal in mind, I'm the type of person, nothing's going to stop me. And I know you're the same, Melissa. Like if, when you get that goal, like nothing is going to stop you. That's what you're doing is you're building out the largest software company that, that could be for wholesale developers. And um, so I want to get here to your goal because I think a lot of people can learn from this right now. So you said you want to buy a duplex and yes. I want to just work through the benefits of buying a duplex compared to a fourplex. Because mm -hmm. here's the thing, with a duplex, you're gonna do as much work as a fourplex, okay? Mm -hmm. And when you're looking to invest, let's say you're gonna get a hard money loan to purchase this or whatever. With a fourplex, that's still considered a single family, it, it, it's single family residence when you're looking into hard money lending. So right. when you're already gonna do the work, I say, why not just go for the fourplex? If you know you're not going to inhabit it, right? And you're already going to have to be going in there and renovating. What's, mm -hmm. What do you think about that? I, I think that that's genius. <laughs> I think you're right. I do. Let's say you use crafted deals to go and find the fourplex, right? You're mm -hmm. going to find a fourplex on there. Now the conversation goes, do I want to flip it? Do I want to buy and hold it? Right. Let's talk about the pros and cons of flipping what would be the reason why you would want to flip a fourplex? The main thing would be because I would just be able to get in and get out quickly. Yep. So you don't have capital tied up. Right. Right. So this is a really good point to put out there. The reason why you would do a flip is because you're trying to build up your, your reserves. You're trying to build up the amount of capital that you have. If you're right. somebody that already has, I'm, I mean, this is a real number. If you're already somebody that has 300 to $400,000 sitting, sitting in an account somewhere, I would go, why would you flip that property? Hold that property right. if you're getting it out of deal. 
because now you're just going to be able to cash flow. You don't necessarily need the capital appreciation. So that's the reason why we do a flip. If we buy and hold, the strategy there is for cash flow. What are some rules? Do you have any yet, Melissa, around what makes a good cash flowing property? Not yet. Actually, I, I honestly have only really focused in wholesaling and getting the deals and then getting rid of them and finding the end buyer versus investment at all. Yeah. Okay. So this is so fun to talk about this, right? Because I have a couple of rules that make it super, super easy because people, because I've been talking about real estate for a little bit of time now, people now bring me deals. Like a lot of agents actually always in my DMs, like, Hey, you want to buy this? Do you want to buy that? And I always <laughs> say, what is the price per door? Okay. Okay. So let's say Melissa is going to buy a fourplex and the price per door comes out to 120,000. Okay. So if that means per unit, she's paying 120,000 total, total cost would be 480,000 out the door for that. Well, I'm going to follow the 1% rule. And this is well known across real estate investing. I'm not sure where I first heard it, but the 1% rule says that the rent on that property needs to be at least 1% of the purchase price. So that means that that door needs to be making at least $1,200 a month in rent. So I immediately, I ask, well, what's the current rent that it's getting? And just the other day, somebody tried to sell me a fourplex in Florida for it's $165,000 per door. And I said, well, what's the current rent that they're getting? And she said, 800 per door. And I said, absolutely not. I broke it down to her. I just did the math really quick. And I said, you can't sell something based on projected rent. You, you sell it based on what it's currently cash flowing at because it's a business. I'm not buying projections, right? Right. So, <laughs> so let's say she, if Melissa gets this deal and she looks at it and they're currently getting $1,200 a month, in rent, I would say that would, that is a steal of a deal. Absolutely lock it up. Okay. Because it it hits the 1% rule. But if she goes and does the math and the rent currently is only at $800, then guess what? I'm going to be willing to pay for that. I'm only going to be willing to pay $80,000 a door. Right. So it, it makes it extremely easy to say yes or no, because if they're currently not up to market value, like let's say at that $1,200, what is it going to take from me as an investor in capital to get it up to uh, the renovations needed to, to increase the rent, right? So exactly. So that's how you know um, if, it's a, if it's a buy and hold strategy and you know you could get it for at the right amount, the $800 a door, and then you know you can have the reserves to go in there, renovate, get it up to market value, increase it, the rent and then have it be cash flowing even more. So right. that's, that's kind of how I look at, at that situation. It makes it very easy. And then something I learned um, from one of the real estate events I've been at, and I, I can't remember where it was at, but he said something interesting. And I started using this as well in the last six months is that not only does it need to hit that 1% rule, but I don't want to just break even. I want to make money, right? Yeah. So he said he only buys things that profit at least $300 a door. So not only does it need to hit that 1% rule, but I also need to be able to take home $300 a month. When before I was kind of like, even $100, I'll take it. Even $50, I'll right. take it. Because eventually I'm going to be able to get that up and I'm beating inflation. But right. if you want to grow your real estate empire, it's going to take more capital. And so I want to be profiting in every single business. And so that's why it's so important to be able to find good off market deals like at, like we have at crafted deals, because that's really where you're going to find people that are willing to negotiate on that price. And you find the hidden gems over there. So does that kind of help you figure out, Melissa, what you're, what you want to do next when it comes to your next investment property? It does. Yes, it definitely Ah, does. Okay. (laughs) Okay. So now I'm going to push you. I'm going to push you on this, Melissa. I didn't know I was going to do this today, but we're going to get coach Kayla on you. Okay. I'm good with that. (laughs) What's the date? Is it 30 days from now? Is it 60 days from now? When are you getting this? Let's say mid September. Can we do that? Nope. I'm going to push you to do it in 60 days from now. Okay. Because here's why what you're, you're thinking about what's the best time. What's the best time. And the best time is when you find a deal. 
So start to open up your eyes, start to look, you, you see deals all the time. So now it's just saying that that next deal has my money, has my money in it. And if you're thinking about, oh, I want to use my own money. I want to use my own cash. That's why I was waiting. That is no longer going to be a barrier of entry for you because you can find, you can find private money lenders to help you out. You can go to a hard money lender because like hard money lending, I mean, they just base it based on the income, right? So if it's a good deal, you're going to get approved and you'll have an interest only loan on the property. Right. So they don't look at your personal credit score. They don't look at your bank account. They look at the deal. Well, we're going to do it then. <laughs> Melissa, you're like, oh my gosh, I didn't know I was going to get coached today over here. Oh my hey, goodness. You know what? I <laughs> honestly, honestly though, I need it. I, I need it because I'm always, I'm always saying like, show up for yourself, push yourself. I don't always have that other person saying, Hey, like show up for yourself, like keep going, yes. you know, like you can do that. And I really appreciate that. Thank you. I'm so excited for you because, and it's a reminder for everybody too, because she's extremely successful with, with this other, you know, thing that she has going on. It's incredible building out her software company. And it's really good because she's laser focused on building that right now, but you don't want to forget about this other thing that is your long-term wealth generator over here. And I, I always like, I've learned because, you know, I had my career in network marketing for so long. And I put all my eggs in one basket. And then I saw what happens when all your eggs are in one basket. It's not a good situation. So now I'm huge about where are all your streams? I want lots of waterfalls coming into my bank account (laughs) all the time. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So I'm really excited for you. Just let that money flow. (laughs) Yes, girl. Now, Melissa, what is the nicest thing someone has ever done for you? Oh my gosh. (laughs) The nicest thing that somebody ever did for me was see my potential and give me a chance. I could feel that. I could feel that from you. And you deserve that. And I know that's why you're so successful today. And that's why you're always reaching out and trying to help everybody come with you too, which I love that about you. It's a reminder for everybody listening in right now. When you see those gems, if you feel anything, right? speak it over people. Yeah. Take that time. I have a very similar situation when I became a nurse and I was a brand new baby nurse. And my manager at the time in the ER wanted me to become a charge nurse. And I was like, I have only been a nurse for like six months. What are you talking about? And she's like, you have leadership potential. And I said, yes. And that from that moment on, I started looking at myself as a leader. I never thought of myself as a leader before. And it just took her speaking that into me, giving me that opportunity. And that's, I, I really hold a lot of value on that because everything changed for me in my life because I saw, oh, I'm not just a worker. I'm not just a worker bee. I have huge potential to grow. And what is the true ambition that I have in my heart? What is it that I really want to accomplish? So we could be those people for, we could be those generators for people, helping them turn the light on of what is possible for them in their lives. Absolutely. Melissa, you're amazing. I had so much fun. We want everybody to go and use Crafted Deals. So we want them to go to (laughs) craftedeals.co and tell their friends about it, create an account over there. You know, that's helping Melissa grow. She's the, the genius behind the scenes over there at Crafted Deals. So I'm so, so thankful for you. And is there any last parting words you want for the Crafted Entrepreneurs? Just keep moving and believe in yourself. And don't forget that you are a shining star. All right, Melissa, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you, Kayla. 